Hello everyone, thank you for checking out today's video. In this video, we're gonna be covering the opposite from the last video that we put out, which uh, in the previous video, we showed you how to automate the process of onboarding employees onto your ServiceNow instance. I'm gonna be showing you guys now how to offboard employees on your ServiceNow instance. Uh, once again, I broke my promise and I pre did the work uh, to the video and I was recording a video uh, while I was working on it, but I came across an issue where I couldn't delete the roles using the flow and I had to do some research and it turned into a long video. So um, I figured I would just show you guys what I did to save you time from having to uh, sit through all the troubleshooting I had to do. So what I did first is I created a bare bones catalog item. And this one actually has even less fields and stuff going on than the previous video did. So I really only needed these two fields um, to highlight what I was gonna show you guys in this video today. But all I have is the employee. So the employee you want to offboard and then the justification. I don't even use the justification in this video. I just put this here as an example because when you send off your approval notification to the manager for the employee, you want to include that justification so they know why they are either approving or rejecting that request. So it's just there uh, to remind you guys to add that as well as any other variables that you want to add. And uh, it would also make sense to, to add like a requested by section, then a requested for section, and then request details section. So it just gives you more details in case you were um, ever to audit any of the ones that have been submitted, uh, as well as provide additional information to those that are interested in those requests, as well as the manager if they're approving or rejecting those requests. So just keep that in mind. It also improves the visibility um, and the, uh, I guess, just the overall look of the form for the users. And then off to the right, same thing as the previous video, you don't want to order this. You're not ordering um, an offboarding of an employee. You'd want to uh, put that as either request or submit. And then what else did we do? That's pretty much it. Yeah, it's kind of bare bones here. And then what we did is we have an associated flow. So let's go ahead and run through the flow and I'll show you guys what it does. And then again, um, if you guys haven't seen my fundamentals series on how to create flows and catalog items, I'll put a link to those in the description. So what I did is I created the flow. The trigger is the submission of the service catalog. And then when you select that option, you have to link it on the uh, catalog item record. So under process engine, I just selected that flow. And then under that, you do get catalog variables. And then you select the request item as the trigger. And then you select your catalog item that you're using. So that way you can pull in all the variables from the request that was submitted because I'm gonna be using them throughout the flow. And then once you do that, they'll show up here as available. You just move over the ones that you wanna be able to use in your flow over here and then you save it. So what we did first, or I guess second, is we ask for approval. So we're asking for approval of the manager of the uh, person that you're submitting the request for. So the data pill here off to the right for get catalog variables, if you drop it down, there's a manager option because this is called ServiceNow, it's called dot walking. So you can access the initial record, but then you can access everything within that initial record and then everything within that record. So like. If I wanted to, I could pull like the location or the email of the manager. I could just keep going and going and going. But um, yeah, once I got the manager, I just dragged it over here. So anytime someone approves or rejects the request, it'll move it to the next step of the flow. So I have if, so if approved. And if approved, what we'll do is we wanna look up all of the group member records. And let me show you here. So this is the sys underscore user underscore gr member table, and that's where all of the group member associations are saved on your ServiceNow instance. And then I just selected the only condition is user is, and then um, let me close all this so you guys can see what I'm doing uh, right here. So v underscore employee. So I'm just using that as my reference. So it's pulling all of the group member records where the user is that user. And then from there, what we do is we do a for each. So we loop through all of those records. So there could be one, there could be many. And as you loop through them, uh, it's gonna delete them. So it'll delete all of those records. So all of those group member associations will be deleted and essentially doing the exact same thing under the roles table. And the roles table, I'll explain why this is here in a second, but there's the sys underscore user underscore has underscore role. So that's the record that stores all of the role association, associations for users on your instance. And same thing, I just did user is, and then I selected this variable. 
Um, you need to do this though. Otherwise you're going to run into security issues when trying to remove flows or roles from your, on your flows. So you need to do inherited is false because you cannot delete an inherited role, um, using flow designer, but it doesn't matter because it'll still get deleted anyway. So, um, I think that was everything on this one and same thing. It'll loop through them. It'll delete all those records. And last thing that we do is we want to set the active to false so that the user is no longer active and they can't log in anymore. You could probably even set a locked uh, user is locked to true, but I think it does it automatically. And then if it were to be rejected, then it just ends the flow. Um, again, bare bones, you guys would probably want to add different stages here so that the user could see when it's approved and then after it's been, um, uh, after it's been approved, once they know it's completed. And also once it's completed, that'll change the state on the associated request item. Um, or the stage at least. And then you also want to make sure you're closing out your request item on your flow if you're not already doing so with a business rule. It makes sense to do it under a business rule because otherwise you're going to have to do it on your flow every single time. So you want to set up a business rule to close out your requests and your request items um, once a certain uh, condition is met. So like your flow finishes out, um, then you want to make sure that request item is closed. And then if there's no remaining request items, then you close out your request as well. Otherwise you just have a bunch of requests and request items that are still open. But that about does it for this. So let's go ahead and test it and see it in action. So let's pull up a user record. So I modified it, I modified one in particular because I needed the manager and needed to make sure they had roles and groups. So this one has quite a bit. They have 80 roles in five groups and they're active. So this is Abel Tutter and they also have a manager right here. So if it works as expected, then this active will be set to false. Um, locked out should be set to true. All the groups should be gone and all the roles should be gone. Moment of truth. So security had it open. We'll bring in Abel Tutter here. Test. And then order now. Okay, as I scroll down, I will simulate an approval for Able Tutter's manager. And you see that this is their manager right here. So it's not just some random name. The requested approve. Again, I did not um, set any stages. So this stage is not going to change. So that's what I talked about when you want to make sure you set those on your flows. Also, you want to set up business rules because right now this flow would technically be complete. Uh, and this should be changed over to closed or close complete. Or if it were, um, I guess, rejected, you could select like closed and complete. So easiest way to do that is to set up business rules, like I mentioned. And then it would also close out the associated request to if you set up another business rule to do that, because right now that's still open. Okay, let's look at our flow context and let's see if everything worked or if we have an error. Okay, so it was submitted. We got our catalog variables. We asked for approval. It was approved. After that, we looked up those records. It looks like we pulled in five. Um, this one only shows, we only got Okay, that makes sense because the rest were all inherited. So of those 80 roles, they came from five of them. So assuming that we remove those five, it should remove all of the inherited roles too. So we had five groups and five roles. They were all successfully deleted. And then also the update was set as well to mark them as a, um, mark them as active no longer. So now let's go over to Able Tutter's profile. Oh, it already updated. So as you can see, the active is no longer set to true. Now it's locked out. They no longer have any roles or groups and their profile is essentially archived because they can't log it anymore. They're not a part of any roles or any groups. If there's any other dependencies that you would want to remove, you can do that as well in the flow. But um, again, this video is just to show you guys how to get started and then you can modify it from there. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving this video a like. Please also consider subscribing to the channel. Catch you all in the next one very soon.